Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Berto Worry here. Hope you guys are doing well. Well, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Did you take time out to study? Remember, we must study the word. This is a must, must, must. And we know it is late. It is late on this planet. And the solution is Jesus Christ. And he states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3.16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I ask you to be with me right now, Father God. I ask you, Father God, that you will decrease me so that you will be increased is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you are doing well. Okay, so scripture reading is coming from Revelation 13, verses 8 and 9. Revelation 13, verses 8 and 9. Let's see here. It says here, and it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose name are not written in the book of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's go into the healing of the deadly womb. It said, the prophecy of Revelation 13 declared that the power presented, represented by the beast with the lamb-like horn shall cause the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the papacy. They're symbolized by the beast, like unto a leopard. The beast with two horns is also to say to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, and furthermore, it is to command all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark of the beast. And this is coming from Revelation 13, verses 11 through 16. It has been shown that the United States is the power represented by the beast with the lamb-like horns, and that this prophecy will be fulfilled when the United States shall enforce Sunday observance, which Rome claim as the special acknowledgement of her super supremacy. But this but in this homage to the papacy, the United States will not be alone. The influence of Rome's in countries that once acknowledged her domain is still far from being destroyed. As prophecy foretells a restoration of her power, I saw, I saw one of his head as it were wounded to death. And his deadly womb was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And this is Revelation 13, verses 3. The infliction and the deadly womb points to the downfall of the papacy in 1798. After this, said the prophet, his deadly womb was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Paul stated plainly, that the man of sin will continue will continue until the second advent and you can find this in second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 through 8 to the very close of time he will carry forward the work of deception and the revelator declare also referring to the papacy all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life, Revelation uh, 13, 8. In both the old and the new world, the papacy will receive homage in the honor paid to the Sunday institution that rests solely upon the authority of the Roman Church. And when we talk about the Roman Church, we know it's the Roman Catholic Church. Since the middle of the 19th century, students of prophecy in the United States have presented these testimonies to the world. 
in the events now taking place is seeing a rapid advance towards the fulfillment of this prediction. With Protestant teachers, there is the same claim of divine authority of Sunday keeping and the same lack of scriptural evidence as with the papal leaders who fabricated miracles to, to supply the place of the command. Let me go back over here. Okay, let me start with this. It says, with Protestant teachers, there is the same claim of divine authority for Sunday keeping and the same lack of scriptural evidence as with the papal leaders who fabricated the miracles to supply the place of a command from God. The assertion that God's judgment are visited upon men for the violation of Sunday Sabbath will be repeated. Already it is beginning to be urged. And a, move, and a movement to enforce Sunday observance is fast gaining ground. So my, right now, my sister and brother, with this virus that's taking place, we are in a dress rehearsal of what they really want to do. And that is to enforce Sunday worship. So man is taking um, the place of God. Uh, a certain, the Roman Catholic Church wants to place himself or he state he's above God. So that's where we are headed, my sister and brother. So that concludes my topic today, the healing of the deadly womb. Okay, so on tomorrow, no, tomorrow we're going to take a break. As of course, it's Thanksgiving, we'll take a break. And then we'll resume on Friday. And with Friday, I'm going to go ahead and do a review of what we have covered thus far of liberty of conscience through, um, let me go back over my first page, liberty of conscience threatened. That is my topic for Friday. And I was going to do a quick review of what we have covered thus far. Okay. And for those of you that want more information of why uh, God specifically asks us because at his day to worship him in spirit and truth on Saturday. Why Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord and it was never Sunday. You can also go to um, these websites, Sabbath.org and SabbathTruth.com. You can go there and you find a wealth of information. For those of you that serious and want to know why we are supposed to be keeping Saturday and it was never Sunday. And it will be made uh, clear to you. And you will have all the scripture uh, reference there as well. So um, let me share my devotion with you. Uh, devotion. Here it says, Let God's hand mold the clay. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay. And thou, and thou our potter. And we are all the work of thine hand and you can find this in Isaiah 64 verses 8 we do not know that the Lord will do for us let me repeat that we do not know what the Lord will do for us if we will come into line let me pray father God I ask you father God that you will calm my mind and calm my heart and I thank you father God in Jesus name amen and amen it says, God sees what he can make of men. There are possibility which our feeble fate do not discern. E are God's husbandry. E are God's building. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verses 9. He sees all the now unmeanable traits of the character in man, and he knows if men will learn the meekness and the loneliness of Christ. He can mold and fashion the combative spirit, the unmeanable disposition, and bring every power of the being into working orders to the advancement of his kingdom. He longs to refine, elevate, and ennoble the entire life. Through the Holy Spirit power, he can use the very worst character and make them men and women of opportunities. Blessed is the man who by faith 
can get a glimpse of Christ's fate. Then there is a possibility of his becoming Christ-like in character. Great light comes to man as he sees the privilege that are from him. He sees God's plan for him and he dies to self. He submits to be worked. When he submits to be a clay in the hands of the potter, then God works the man into a vessel of honor. Clay in the hand of the potter is turned again and again until the will of the potter is wrought out in the vessel. Grace and truth will make perfect the work of fashioning the human clay that the glory of the great potter may appear in the production of a shapely vessel molded and polished for service. The potter cannot mold and fashion unto honor that which have never been placed in his hands. Let me repeat that. The potter can never mold and fashion unto honor that which has never been placed in his hands. The Christian life is one of daily surrender. Let me repeat that. The Christian life is one of daily surrender, submission, and continual overcoming. Every day, fresh victories will be gained. Self must be, self must be lost sight of, and the love of God must be constantly cultivated. Thus we grow up into Christ. Thus the life is fashioned according to the divine model. Let the hands of God work the clay for his own service. He knows just what kind of vessel he wants. Let me repeat this last paragraph. Let the hands of God work the clay for his own service. He knows just what kind of vessel he wants. So that concludes my devotion. Let God's hand mold the clay. Let me go into my hymn. Oh, for a closer walk, and oh, for a closer walk, and I believe I'm on verses three, but let me double check. Yep, verses three. So I'll do um, one. I'm sorry, from one all the way to three. I think I'll do that. Oh, for a closer walk. Oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and heavenly friend. A light to shine upon the road that leads me to the Lamb. Return, O holy dove, return, sweet messenger of rest. I hate the sin that makes thee mourn and drove thee from thy breast. Here's the third verse. What peaceful hour I once enjoy, how sweet thy memory still. But they have left an aching void the world can never fill. My goodness, oh, for a closer walk. I hope that is your prayer, my sister, my brother. Each moment we want to have a closer walk with the Lord. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. The kind of grace and son of Father, I thank you for this beautiful day, Father our God. I, I thank you for giving us another opportunity to get our lives in order, Father. We thank you. Thank you for being such a merciful God, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, if we ask that if, you, if we have done anything that was not pleasing, are acceptable in your sight, Father God. I ask you that you will forgive us and make us whiter than snow. And once you've done that, Father God, we ask you to fill us with the power that we need to run from sin. Give us the power that we need to spread the word that Jesus, that you are coming soon, Father God, and each one of us need to get our lives in order. We thank you, Father God. We forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so thank you guys so much for stopping by. So if this was a blessing to you, can you hit the like button and make a comment? What are you doing? I am. I did my greens yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, sweet potato today. And then I do the other um, stuff tomorrow. So sweet potato today, that is my... Um, that is my goal today, that to do the sweet potato. And then I'm going to cut up all the, um, all the, how would you say, 
all the onions and all that other stuff, the celery, all that stuff that goes into the um, uh, stuffing. So I'm going to do all that, do those things today. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Have you finished cooking or you just did maybe did your pies or whatever? Have you, and then what scripture have you studied? And then once you have done that, my sister and brother, hit the share button, hit the share button. Then you can follow me over on YouTube on the Burdell Warrior. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and then you can also give me a thumbs up there as well. And um, once you have done that, my sister and brother, I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May I have a hug? May I have a hug? I don't think we have a hug this week. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Thank you, my sister and brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So have a super uh, uh, Thanksgiving day. I'm thinking about... Uh, Friday. I'm already on Friday, 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 Friday. No, no, no. But have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family, my my sister and brother. Enjoy your family. So until um, Friday, when we're going to go into our review of what we have covered. Until then, be blessed and take care. I love you. I love you and appreciate you. Until then, be blessed.